調子どう。勉強しすぎて疲れたんじゃないか。相変わらずだね。おい、起きろ。レビュータイムだよ。これはなんだ。か。だよ。しかし。こうすれば。なんだ。が。よし。じゃあ。これはなんだ。違う。棒だよ。これは。うん。そうだ。パ。これはなんだ。だ。そして、これは。ず。じゃあもう、やめよう。難しいと思ったんだろう。本当の戦いはこれからだよ。Well, anyway, first up, we're gonna learn how to do katakana. Because we've already finished Hiragana. Uh, here we go. Same thing as always. Start up in the top right, go straight on down. A, E, U, A, A, N, O, O. That's what we'll be doing today. He's speaking Japanese, I don't understand what he's saying. What are you talking about, silly? You need to get more sleep. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I promised you we would, and we are. Guess what? Come on over. You ready to get started with a brand spanking new script? Now, if you remember, this goes, we're starting with Ah here. This goes exactly like it did for Hiragana. A-U-A-O, first thing we're doing. And a uh, little reminder, Rooney. Katakana is used for mostly for foreign loan words such as computer, hamburger, and the likes of the famed baby car, naive, and many, 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 many other words stolen from English and other languages, completely bastardized to the point where half of them don't even mean the same thing anymore. That is mostly what katakana is used for, but it's also used for writing your name if you are, uh, well, from the English-speaking world. Or I should say, you don't have a Chinese, Japanese, or Korean last name, or first name, then you will be using katakana to write your name. How about that? That's a little review of why we use the katakana script. There are exceptions to this. There are certain words 
here and there that uh, are not foreign loan words, but still use katakana. And sometimes katakana is used like, kind of like uh, you would use I italics in English uh, to like stress a word or um, put, put a little emphasis on it or something. Um, sometimes a word that would be written in hiragana would be written in katakana to do such thing. So anyway, there are many uses for this, and we'll be going over them in more detail uh, the further down the line we go in the class. But uh, for now, we're going to get started with uh, the first character on the list. And remember, hey, remember the good old Yoshida Institute? I remember them. They told you how to do the stroke order for all of Hiragana. But hey, guess what? Oh, Katakana. Katakana is on here too. Look at that, first one. Nice and easy. Ah. Head on over. Boom, done it. Ah. Ah. Mm. Ah. Ah. That's it, that's, that's it. You did it. Good job. Let's move on. E. Hey, look, these are all, they just seem so easy right at the start, right? Boom, one, two. Let's do it. One, two, E. Remember, the Romaji, or the Roman alphabet character I, is pronounced E. Okay, this is this here written here is just pronunciation. Okay, it's just how you pronounce it. Whenever you see the Roman character I in Japanese, it will always be pronounced as E. Like I told you last time, and like I will continue telling you into infinity, these vowels do not change. Boom. E. Uh, albeit a rather sloppy one. Boom. Ooh. Now, don't get tripped up. One, two, and then three. Okay, that second one is not all one stroke, even though it might lead you to believe that it is. One, two, three. Ooh. One, Two, three. Ooh. Okay. Good job. Eh. Check it out. It's right there. Boom. One, two, three. Look at this nice and easy intro into katana. Uh, katakana. And maybe your, maybe your old buddy Vela needs to get some sleep. He's calling katakana katana all of a sudden. One, two, three. Eh. And if you want to be if you want to get out your little try-hard hats, you see how this stroke is shorter than this stroke? Yeah. That's on purpose. That's the way it's written. Try to maintain that if you can. One, two, three. Ever so slightly longer. That bottom stroke. Eh. And this tends to confuse people when they're first uh, starting out the language because they'll look at this and their brain, coming from English, will want so hard and so much to say and see the letter I, a capital I here, and it will make them think that it is not E, but in fact E. So there's all sorts of confusion there. This is E. Alright? Do not confuse it with E, which we did before. That Remember, E looks like this. Or more like that, a little less sloppily written. E. E. Okay, be careful. Be careful, class. Hey, look, the last one in the, uh, the old column here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. Remember what I told you about this? It's not O. Oh. It's O. Oh. Get rid of your little, little English. Oh, get rid of this. All right, knock it off. O. Oh. All right, hey, you done it. One, a two, a three, a four, and a five. And by the way, if you are, uh, if you're still back here working on Hiragana, that's okay. This video will be here forever. Yeah, and you can always come back and look at it when you're ready to progress, because this should technically be your day 11 
assuming that you've been able to keep up with one column a day, which isn't that hard, but if not, maybe this is your day 16. Maybe that's fine too. Relax. Everything's going to be okay. We are going to move on and do 12 as well. Keeping our tradition uh, alive of doing two columns here. For those super tryhards, the rest of you, stick with one column a day. You super tryhards, you can do two. And again, don't you dare go and do three plus columns a day. I will expel your ass immediately. All right. Moving along. Ha. Huh. Who? Oh, <laughs> it's pretty much a freebie almost because this looks... Mm, so very much like Ka from Hiragana. You'll notice that it's missing this little the little dash thing, right? And it's more sharp. And that's going to be a running theme for all of Katakana. They're very sharp looking, whereas Hiragana are more round and curvy. So Hiragana just seems like uh, the happy one, and Katakana just seems like the angry one to me. I don't know what to tell you. These are sharp and pointy. Uh, but that's a good way to immediately know that you're looking at two different scripts as well. Helps keep them apart. So, what do we got here? Remember, go check it out. Hey, one, two. Almost exactly the same, well, it is the same stroke order as Hiragana, minus it's a little, little dash thing off to the side. So, one, two. And try to make this part sharp. Whereas Ga, or Ka, I should say, is... <laughs> Well, this is a terrible cop, but... You see you see how this is more round, right? This is sharp. That's... The way you want to do it. I mean, in the in the end, if this doesn't have this thing here, everybody's going to know it's katakana, even if you do it kind of round. It, it'll look more like hiragana, but... People will figure it out, so don't, don't stress too hard about it. So that is one, two. Ka. All right. Key. Hey, that looks just like Key from Hiragana too, doesn't it? Right here and right here. Look at that. You've got the, the two dashes and the line down. The only thing you don't do is this, basically. You just don't add the little uh, loopy loop at the bottom there. So, do you think it's going to be the same? Pretty much. Look at that. One, two, three. One, two, three. Key. And notice it's on a slant here. All right, it is not straight up and down. It is not this. This is terrible. Don't do it that way. Please do it like this. Slanted. And you little tryhards, again, this is shorter than this one, technically. It doesn't really matter too much, but if you want to just look so nice and crisp and clean, then you will make the first stroke shorter than the second stroke and go slanted. Key. Boom. Done it. Next up, we've got... K. Now, you might start getting the ha be starting to get the hang of uh, the way the strokes work here. Remember I said top left to bottom right, typically, is how they go, and that's the same as it's going right here. One. Two. K. One. Two. K. Very easy. Nice and sharp. Keep it sharp. Keep it pointy. Keep it lethal. Okay. K. Uh oh. Looks a lot like Ku. This one might trip us up. Like uh, Meh and uh, Nu and Meh would trip you up in Hiragana. This is a character that's similar to the one right before it. Uh, and the stroke order is uh, pretty much the same too, but this is three strokes as you see here. One, two, three. So what's the difference here? This is K. What's the difference to the character we just did? One, two. This is K. Well, this part of the stroke here was uh, basically detached and pushed to the left, right? It used to be here for K, and now it's over here for K. That's the difference between the two, and you will... If you are new to Japanese, probably screw this up a million times until you get used to it. And then once you're used to it, uh, you won't. That's how that works, right? Anyway, let's see that again. One, two, three. K. Nice and pointy. Always keep it pointy for katakana. 
Cole. The last one in the set here. It's, uh, you know, it's a box without a, a side to it. That's it. One, two. All right. Check it out. One, two. Cole. One, two. Cole. That's it. Hey -o. Boom, 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 boom. 11 and 12. Ai yueo kaki kukeko. You've already gone and done it. You've already gone and straight into the uh, the katakana there. Uh, remember how we do this. Don't forget the method. We throw in old characters as we learn the new characters. Maybe you're still doing, still reviewing uh, wa o n. So maybe you're doing something like wa o n. And then today you you threw onto your list in the notebook ah and then you did ba o m a e right and then you did wa o m a e u and so on if you have forgotten the method that means you weren't using it this whole time and uh detention uh expulsion uh, I'm not gonna expel you. Uh, just, I send you back. I send you back to uh, the first video. That's what I. That's what I do. That's your punishment. Uh, because you should be doing this method every single class here, every time in your notebook. I'm not gonna keep doing it on the screen because it's gonna take forever for me to show you that on the screen, and there's no point to it. You should know how to do it and keep doing it. All right. Boom. So that marks the end of today's katakana lesson. Okay. And, uh, hey, if you remember up until now, the kanji, the vocabulary that I've been introducing while using kanji and hiragana, so far have been watashi, hito, namae, anata, kata. And today, boom, ooh, we got a complicated one for beginners, but it's an important one. And uh, you should be able to read this hiragana. If you are progressed into katakana now, you should be able to read this. And you should be able to write it. Mi, n, na. Mi, na. Everyone. Okay. And let's come on over here. Remember, you can go over to Jisho and you can search it. And you don't have to type kanji there. You can just search the character. Mi, na. And then you can click it over here to see the stroke order. And you can click this to play it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait, did I screw that up? I don't know. If you don't want to watch it animated, they've got it out here like in slides, basically. You're going to start up in the top left here. There's, there's basically three major parts of this. One, two, three, right? Three different major characters here if you broke them up into individual um What's the, what's the call? What's the thing called? Like, root, uh... uh I'm forgetting what it's called. But anyway, these are like individual kanji in themselves, but when they're combined, they're turned into a new kanji like this. So, anyway, throw, throw out what I just said. I don't want to confuse people. You're going to start up here. Remember, the red dot is where you start, and then you follow it until you finish the stroke. Okay, so one, two, three. You're coming in on this stroke instead of going this way, right? So you're going in and then down. And then this way, this way, this way, this way. Okay, so let's go ahead and see this in action, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that why I always screw that up? I always feel like I screw that up. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, this is a little sloppy, but uh, it's called handwriting, okay? Everybody loves my handwriting. What about you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. And uh, since this is a lot of strokes, you can come back here and keep checking it. Um, but the point is, this is Minna, everyone. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. If you say in katakana, 
Mina. This is basically this also means everyone, but it's it's minus the n here, right? Um, so basically, you can say Mina san, right? Which which would be like this here, right? Mina san. Uh, or you can say Mina, which would be minus the san. And uh, this is actually one more vocab, kind of vocabulary that I want to teach you today. It's, it's, I guess it's not really vocabulary. It's like a suffix, right? It's something you attach to the end of a word. And a lot of you will probably already know this because it's as ubiquitous as the word konnichiwa is in Japanese. Everybody knows that means hello, right? Uh, sang is um, used most often as Mr. or Miss or Mrs. Um, so basically, it, you write your name, let's say you're writing Valen, and then Sang. Valen Sang. By the way, I would not ever refer to myself as Valen Sang, because that would be putting an honorific suffix onto my own name, which will make you seem like a pompous ass. So uh, if that is your goal, then by all means, uh, fix it to the, the end of your name. Otherwise, don't in a million years do that. Sung is used for everyone else, okay? Not yourself, ever. When I hear people put that on their own names, oh boy, does the cringe come out. Mm. Very cringe. Don't do it. Um, the thing is, when I say that it means Mr., Miss, or Mrs. Uh, in English, that does confuse some people because we tend not to use these all the time. We use them in, you know, any kind of respectful situation or referring to somebody maybe at work or... Uh, at school, to your teacher, whatever. In Japanese, uh, unless you're very close with someone, um, you should affix san to... Uh, when you're first meeting somebody, definitely their last name, not their first name. And if you've come to know them and you're kind of on first name basis, you can affix it to the first name and drop the last name. Uh... Yeah, so basically just like any time. This is kind of default politeness for addressing people, right? Sang. Right, this is sa. Um, and whenever you're addressing everyone, right? You would say, Minasan. Okay? Minasan. Minasan, konnichiwa. Hello, everyone. Something you will often hear at the beginning of Japanese YouTube videos or presentations or speeches or anything like that when you're addressing an audience. And that's why when you look it up in the dictionary, ooh, I bet you it's also going to say something like, let's see. Everyone, everybody, all, everything, all, all, everyone, everybody. Mm-hmm. She is loved by everybody. An example sentence here. Um, it can also be translated, depending on the context, as ladies and gentlemen, or ladies and gentlemen, minasan. Okay. So this is going to be one of your harder kanji to start out with, but I think you're up for the challenge, aren't you? Don't you think? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's another note that I want to make here. If you ever see... ...in Japanese... ...two ends in a word... So, for example, let me, let me just erase this. We're going to come back to Mina in a second, because it's also used for this word. But if you see, for example... You know, I, I actually, I think I have not taught you this, but that's because most people already know it. It just means hello, right? Hello in Japanese. Konnichiwa. And boy, do people butcher this because they use English pronunciation and they don't pay attention to the two ends right here. So they, I often hear things like an English um, or American accent like um, Konnichiwa. K. First of all, K does not exist in Japanese, does it? What is this character? Ko. So right off the bat, if you're saying K, you're wrong. Knock it off. You sound ridiculous. Ko. So this would be ko. Mm. Ni. Chi. And then this says wa. It's spelled in Romaji as W-A, but it actually uses the character for H. 
Ha. All right, and I told you that this sometimes gets used um, both ways like this. So try not to dwell on this right now because I don't want to confuse you. But I just what I want to point out here is that there is n attached right before it ni. So you're not saying you're not rushing through this here like you would in English. Konnichiwa. That sounds ridiculous. Ko n ni chi wa konnichiwa. So you can kind of hear I'm saying konnichiwa, right? That's exaggerated, but konnichiwa. Okay. So the same thing for uh, excuse me. If we're writing out here, mina. Uh, so I told you there's mina and mina as it's written here, right? So the difference in pronunciation there is mina, mina, right? You should be able to hear that. And um, it's really just contextual. Like if you're saying mina sang or you're just saying mina without the sang, okay? It's, it's a funky one, but at the risk of confusing everyone, if you understood everything I just said, hats off to you. If you didn't, do it. just relax. Uh, forget about it. All right, this will come up again later, and uh, I will explain again slowly um, when we're constructing an actual sentence using it, and it will probably click much better then. So for now, know that this character is minna, and it means everyone, and throw it into your rotation. All right? And if you do that, you should have... Watashi hito namae anata kata and minna under your kanji belt now and uh hey what did i tell you remember this book we're still doing it there it is right there mina song right and you'll see here it says mina not minna mina song ladies and gentlemen all of you okay and it even says right here sung Mr. Mrs. Title of respect added to a name. Uh, like I said, you'll add that to any name until you get really close with somebody. Um, you know, family member, obviously. Uh, really good friends. Even even somewhat good relationships with co-workers. If they're similar age to you, you'll start using these things here. Which, um, if you can read them, which you should be able to if you can read hiragana, say Chang and Kun. And we're going to go over these probably next time. Do not look at these right now. Well, I guess you can. I can't stop you. But uh, I want you to focus right now on Sang. Because I, there's a bunch of stuff I got to go over for Chang and Kung as to when you should use them and when you should definitely not use them. Because, oh boy, do does everybody in the English-speaking world that uh, likes anime and would consider themselves a weeb or an otaku... Uh, they use these in the weirdest times. Uh, I, I, I have to explain these, okay? So just hold your horses on these. Focus on this time, Minasang and Sang in your rotation, along with uh, today's katakana. A i u e o kaki ku keiko. All right. Whoop, that's the wrong one. There it is. So, with that said, um, Thank you to, we got some new followers here. Sad Warman, Sad Worman, Worman. Zarzamora-san as well. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to the new subscribers over on YouTube as well. Um, keep following along. Yeah, looking good. I will, of course, try to keep these videos coming as quickly as possible. I think I've kind of fallen into the groove of doing it at least one one a week uh your your buddy valen here in the year 2162 he's got a lot going on okay uh don't don't ask why i don't just time travel in uh the next set of videos immediately you know that's not how it works what are you, are you trying to find loopholes you trying to find some uh problems with the way that my time travel story works. Because it's not a story, it's, it's real, it's real life. That's how I live my life, okay? So just knock it off. And keep studying. Keep up the good work. 
And with that said, I will see you next time. So go ahead and uh, have yourselves a nice little night there. If you're doing this at night, like I recommended, right before bed, Dr. Valen recommended. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.